voice, your face was the only thing that got me through. I don't know how or why, but it did. And I just needed to share that with you. I appreciate that. I'm sorry I'm crying, but nothing like that has ever happened to me before. I understand. Uh, so how are you? I am living and breathing, which is all I can ask for. How's your commitment? Oh, man, your... it's going wonderful. Good, man. I love seeing you shopping. I mean, you are a bright light. I'm 67 years old. Oh. Yeah. I have no family. I'm the only one left. And watching your videos every day is a bright light to me. I appreciate that. I don't mean to put you on the spot or anything. I know this is something weird, but... No, it's actually not, right? So, I made my number public for people like you, right? Yes, I, I yeah. suffer from PTSD, depression, anxiety, and when I smoked that joint, I didn't know what hit me, man. I tore my house up. I mean, everything, my, everything's busted up. You okay? I just called the hospital. I don't know. I left without doctor's permission. You think that was a good idea? No, but my dog was here alone. What was I supposed to do? I completely understand. Um, but I'm trying. Okay. But yeah, that's the reason my number public. Right, I get a whole bunch of prank calls and all this, that, and the third. And I don't mind at all because you might call me one day. Well, you know, I have, uh, my friend Harold has a granddaughter named Nova. Mm -hmm. And she calls me grandma. She's six. I've never had any kids. I don't have any, you know. And when I was laying on the bathroom floor, Nova was there. And she kept saying, EJ. Ed, Jean, Bear, Corn, and Harley. I'm serious. I ain't shitting you. And she kept saying, come on, Grandma, say it with me. I'm talking about we love Nova. Yes. Yep, she said, even though you're not my grandma, I love you so much. I do, too. <sighs> I do, too. I appreciate you taking time out your day to call me. Oh, I had to. Hey. I had to. I, I was looking at your, your video today and I thought, how can I message him? How can I slip into his DMs? Tell him, hey, man, I really need to talk to you, you know? But then when I got, I clicked on something and your phone number was there and I'm like, oh, my God, thank you. Yeah, I, you know. I, I, I don't posted, think I'm some cranky woman because this is coming from the heart, man. I completely understand. And I'll your name is Dan? My name Day, right? My real name is Demond, but they call me Day like the day of the week. Oh, Day? Yeah. Cool. You know, I'm Leanne, L-E-E-A-N-N. Hi, Leanne. Thank you for calling. Uh, oh, it's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you also. Um, could you save my number and give me a call every whip stitch? I, I will definitely say your number. I am extremely bad with calling out, right? So that's the reason. Let me tell you a quick little story. Okay. So I am, I am one of those people that not only suffering from PTSD and all the other things that I be going through in life, right? I have an extreme tunnel vision to what I got going on at the moment that's right in front oh, of me. Because, focus on one thing. But hold on, right? It's a reason why, right? Because sitting down in a fit of depression, I discovered something about life, right? The only things that we really have control over or within arm's reach, anything that you can kind of reach out and touch is something that you can control. Anything that you can't reach out and hold with your own hands or feet or whatever is completely out of your control, including right. people's thoughts and actions and all of that. Anything that you can't reach out and touch is out of your control. So I kind of stay focused on 
what's in front of me at all times because those are the only things that I can kind of control. Yeah. With that being well, I, I used to worry. And then I found God. He saved me. And after that, I thought, what's the sense in worrying? It's not going to change what's going to happen tomorrow, you know? And then I'm one of those people that when I go to bed at night, it's like my brain's a thousand miles an hour with the what ifs, what ifs. And I try to, I try to get that out of my head, you know? And uh, my doctor changed my antidepressants, and it's, it's really helping. I get it. I get it. But let me finish telling you my story. Oh, right. sorry. So, I I only focus on the things that are right in front of me, right? And with that being said, I am horrible with calling out because I only call out when I'm in trouble. Anybody who, <laughs> anybody who know me already know if I pop up on your caller ID, nine times out of ten. <laughs> As soon as you answer the phone, I am asking for something. I need yeah. something. I am in need, whether it be financial, whether it be information, whether it just be an extra set of hands. If I call you, you should already know I want something as soon as my name pop up. And I got into the habit of that. And I, it's been hard to break it, right? Like I just be going through life. But if you call me, I might answer the phone, right? Okay. I, yeah, like I literally might answer the phone. Well, I lost my phone and all this craziness. I've searched my entire house. I mean, everything. I can't find my phone. So I have no one's numbers. I'm in the dark here. That makes sense. Because I don't remember anything. Join the club. Oh, but you're great. Your puppies are great. Thank you. And I will send you a picture of my pup. Please. I uh, My husband passed away in 2014. Condolences. And it was a horrible, it was, he got diagnosed with liver cancer on August 7th and he died on September 20th. And it was horrible. And I lost it. I was alone and I really didn't care about anything, you know? And... One day, my friend Rhonda, we were going to a town here about 20 miles away, and I said, let's go to the Humane Society. Let me see what they got. I walked in, and there was 100 pit bulls. And in the front, there was a little white dog covered up with a blanket, and all I could, all I could see was her eyes. I said, that's my dog. He said, she's 11. I said, okay, 11 months. I thought she was a puppy. I said, I don't care, that's my dog. He said, well, she's got something wrong with her back leg. And I said, I don't care, I'll take her. Well, I had to run home and get my lease. I said, don't put her back in that cage, please. He just kept saying, she's 11, she's 11. I'm like, okay, I got it, 11 months. He said, no, she's 11 years old. I said, I don't care. And how they got her was she was a mama at a puppy mill and they raided the puppy mill and uh, the, she's the best thing I ever got, man. She's 18 now. The vet told me they did blood work a couple months ago and said, whatever I'm doing, keep doing it. But her leg, her back leg, she's a Maltese. And they said they're born with a dislocated kneecap. And if they're not fixed when they're a baby, there's nothing they can do about it. So uh, she does pretty good on three legs. I'm going to get her one of those little carts here soon, soon as she can't, you know. But she can outright me. Oh, she doing it. Oh, she's beautiful. And then what scares me is what she went through when I was going through that crap. She was terrified, I'm sure. Mommy, what's going on, you know? I understand. But Leanne, call me. Okay. Yeah, this is my number. You could call me. I might answer the phone. Well, put my name in there, bud. This might not be my number because I have to get a new phone. But when I get the new phone, I'll put you in. And then if you answer, send me a I'll just say, hey, man, it's Leanne from Ohio. Give me a call. Leanne, give me, just text me your name. I'll lock it in. All right, honey. You have a good day and you be safe. 
Thank you so much for answering the phone, man. You don't know how much that means to me. Uh